So for the second square, we're gonna use the same materials we used for the first square. The same, um, the scissors, this is gonna come in really handy. We're gonna need it. Then the needle to weave in the end, the four stitch markers, it'll be the same as the last one. And I'll be using this to mark my first, um, the beginning of the round, right? And the same um, hook. But this time I'm gonna be using four colors of yarn. Like I said, it's, um, uh, not my girl, what's it called? Lion Brand, Hue and Me, Juniper, Color One, Mustard Two, Saffron Three, and Shadow Four. So I'm gonna work in that pattern all the round. So let's get started. We're gonna start the same way that we started the other square with a um, magic ring and eight single crochet and then 16 single crochet, okay? So I'll work that off camera or you can, you know, pause the video and go back to the first um, parts of that and then the first part of the first square. And then I'll um, meet you back here when I have one loop on the hook. Right, so now I have the 16 single crochet and then I have slip stitch into the first um, single crochet and now I have one loop on the hook. Now I'm going to start working the um, first corner and it's it's going to be the exact same way we did the last one only with four colors, okay? So yarn over, insert into the same stitch. So that's my first corner, and I mark it. I'm going to mark it with the blue stitch marker. Yeah. Okay, there it goes. And then I'm going to work the first side. And there's three stitches: one, two, three. Right. So, like we did when we were working this square, we started the return pass with the second color, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start the return pass with the second color in the sequence, which is the mustard, right? So we're gonna slide our work. Oof. I was close to the other side. Grab the mustard. Right? We're gonna yarn over, pull through one. Like so, yarn over, pull through two until there is one loop remaining on the hook. I want to mention here that it is important that you turn your work the same way each time. Like when we're turning from the wrong side to the right side, you turn it the same way each time. You don't turn it this way this time and turn it that way and then turn it you make sure that you turn it the same way each time. And for me, I'm turning it this way, right? That way it just faces up. And then this stitch right here gets a little twisted, but because we're working the full stitch for the pattern, it, it's, um, it doesn't matter, right? So now we're, we've worked our first corner on our first side, and we're gonna work our second corner with the same yarn, with the color two, right? So, same um, process, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we're gonna place our stitch marker on the center stitch, like so, okay. There. Then we're gonna continue with that same color and work the next side, pulling up a loop in the next three stitches, so that's one, two and three all right so right now we have one two three four five six seven stitches on and now we're going to work the return pass again we're going to use the color that is next in the sequence which is for us for this tutorial is saffron so i'm going to slide my work to the other hook grab some yarn and then yarn over, pull through two. Okay. I still yarn over, pull through two. Oops. Like 
so and we'll pull through two and we'll pull through two it's important that at this stage you work slowly that way you get the hang of the colors and the switching and everything you know before you you know uh, keep going all right so we have this color too we're on color three we turn our work the same way like so work on the third um the third corner so that's you know um right pull up a loop you know over or insert pull up a loop like so i'm gonna place our stitch marker on the center stitch work the next corner in the next three stitches sorry the next side two three right and then slide the work to the other hook we're going to use the fourth color to walk the return pass and the last slide so like before we're just going to yarn over and pull through two and over pull through two and over pull through two and over pull through two right and then we turn the work and work the fourth corner insert you never pull up a loop and over insert in the same stitch you never pull up a loop and then place the last stitch marker on the um, center stitch. I think I may have switched the stitch markers, but it doesn't matter. As long as I have the one for the um, beginning of the round, it's okay. Right, and now remember on the last side, there's gonna be one extra stitch. So we're gonna have four stitches here. That's one, two, three, and four. So our first round is done. Now let's see what we have before we work the return pass. So this is our main color we started with. This is color two, which works the, which is used for the um, return pass on side one, the corner, corner two, and side two. Then we will have our third color, saffron, which is worked use for the return pass on side two and then corner three and side three we have our fourth color which is shadow which is used for the return pass on side three corner on side four and the side four right now we're going to work the return pass for side four and to do that we're going to need our first color which is the green. If I turn this piece to the back, you can see all the um, loops hanging out. So this is where I say you have to be very careful to make sure to keep your um, yarn untangled. So after a while, you're gonna have to go through and separate them and then work a few rows, go through, separate them and do all of that. But to work the return pass for this next row, because we see here that the next section is green, right? So we need our green yarn. We take the yarn, this is a green yarn, from the pl last place it, it was used. We're going to cut it with a nice tail, not, not a long one, just a nice tail. And then join it to... The work for the return pass right so we're just gonna use that yarn over pull through two like so now we have completed round one and you can see each color is represented. Right, since we're still using color A, we're gonna work, we're gonna start round two with the same color. Starting round two, 
we're gonna work the corner stitch which is a Tunisian double increase stitch where you insert as for TKS Tunisian knit stitch yarn over insert into the same stitch remember we're working only into the um, center stitch that's where we're working on we're not working into the corner spaces right and then as we did for the first um, for the first square we're gonna work a Tunisian full stitch into the stitch right here one two three four try to keep the um, tails in the back and work over them that way they stay in the back of the work now we have four stitches right and so we look here and we know that the next color in the sequence is the mustard we slide our work to the other hook snip the mustard and then use that for the return pass right yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two like so until the end right then we turn our work the same way okay just tug on that yarn if it gets loose and we continue with side with corner two and side two using mustard so um, insert hook cuts for TKS yarn over insert into the same stitch be sure to always move your stitch marker up that way you know where you're going into when you get to the corner and then we're gonna work this side one two three See the end sticking out, just lay to the back and walk over it four, right? Now it's time for the return pass. Slide work to the other side. Our next color in the sequence is saffron. So we're gonna snip, oops, it's getting away from me. Snip that off. Grab oops, yarn and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, make too much noise, and over, pull through two, all the way over. Okay, that wasn't bad. And over, pull through two, all the way to the end. Alright, so you turn and tug as much as is needed. And then we're going to work corner three and side three using saffron. Tunisian double increase. Move your stitch marker up. Right, and then work the side two three pull this to the back work over it four right. and then you slide the work to the other side now we need shadow yeah it's hard to <laughs> this 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 can get quite um busy but you just have to keep track of your yarn and what you're snipping off. Okay, and now we have shadow, yarn over, pull through two, like so. Okay, and then we turn, same way. Tug, work the fourth corner. Move the stitch marker up. Once you get the hang of it, it is quite repetitive. You just keep going round and round and round and round. All right, so remember that on the last, on the fourth side, we always have one extra stitch. So we've had four on these three sides, and now we're gonna have five on this side. So that's one, two, three, four, 
five. And remember, we're not working into the space, into the corner space, right? So before we work the return pass, that is what we have. So this part can get quite bulky because of all the ends and stuff. But once you, um, when you're done and you sew them all in, it just becomes as flat as this. Okay, so this is our, um, this is round two complete. And so we would repeat round two all around until we get the um, width or the length that we like. I'm gonna work another couple of rounds on camera, that way you can see how, um, because this spot can be tricky. So I'm gonna work the return pass and then continue with round three and maybe four.
So that's the process of changing um, the colors and working in the round like that. I'm going to stop here and work the rest off camera and then I'll show you how to do the, um, the bind off. It's the same process as the first square. You would um, work two single crochet in the corner and then one single crochet across, change to the next color, work two single crochet in the corner and just do that way until you come to the very, to the, um, until you work your way around and then you weave in the end. Another alternative to all of this right here is to um, stop and weave in the ends after. Um, like after you've done a few rows, just stop and weave in the ends and then work a few more rows, stop and weave in the ends. You could do that or you could braid the um, ends down like so. I would just take these and just braid them down that way they're not all in the way or you could just hold them down with a um, rubber band or something if you know that works for you so just braid them down that way they're not all you know moving around and stuff like that or you could just hold the short ends all right you could just hold them all in a uh, with a rubber band or so and then that that this could get quite uncomfortable so I think the braids would be better that way they can lay flat and then you can just tie them up in a, in a band like this and keep going that way they don't you know mess with your current row but either way um, you have lots of ends to weave in so that would be it it'd be um nice to do like fun to do like with Netflix or something and just know that you're gonna have a whole day weaving in ends. But it's worth it, I promise. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna work the a few more rows off camera and then I'll show you the bind off and then we'll be done. See you soon. Now we're coming to the end of the return pass on the fourth side and we're gonna start working the um bind off. Right, so now that I'm, since I have um, this color, the green color, I'll just go ahead and um, work the bind off with the green on this first side. In the corner, we're going to have two single crochets, like so, two single crochet stitches, right? And then in each space across, we're going to have one single crochet, like so. until the next corner and then we're going to okay now we we're at the second corner we're going to cut the um, mustard which is right here there we go. Grab that and use that to work the bind off on that side. So insert and there we go. Two single crochet in the corner and then one single crochet in each. Space across. Ooh, what was that? Yikes, excuse me. <laughs> so we're just going to um, do the same thing on the next two sides with the appropriate color. And then, so on this side, I'm going to cut the saffron, that's this one, 
and then work the binder for this side and then work the binder for this side and I'll see you when I'm done with that okay we're all done um, with the bind off on each side now I'm just gonna cut off the um, long lengths of yarn like so and then this one I think that's it okay so this is what we have uh, okay this is what we have All right um with the with with all the ends in the back it feels kind of thick thicker than this but um i'm just going to sew in the ends so you can see how so you can sew them in um in whatever way works that works for you um i know i talked about braiding them earlier but the thing with the with the braid is depending on how tight you braid it causes the um front to cave into cave in that way um so i wouldn't suggest braiding it for use you can braid it down while you're working on it and then weaving the ends later but um i wouldn't suggest braiding it down for use because then it it distorts the shape of the square but um i'm gonna work the um i'm gonna sew in the ends so you can see, and then um, I'll meet you back at the end. So that's how you can sew in the ends um, on on all the sides if you choose. And then um, in the end, I showed you how to close the center of the square. That way that that is closed. Another way to sew in the ends is by making knots, right? So in, in, instead of sewing in each um, yarn, um, okay, like these. Okay. Okay, no, not this. That will need to be sewed in. These two, you can make a knot or two knots. Pull tight the second time. Because this is not a smooth yarn, your knots are safe. Ooh, right? They're pretty safe. So you work your way down, you pick the two colors that are on that side, make a knot. Tie that loosely, tie this tight. You see that it, it doesn't affect the stitch. Okay, and then you pick the next one. This might be easier and quicker, also depending on what you're gonna use the square for. Like if it's a, um, a pillow, right? If you're gonna, you know, stuff it, this is gonna be the inside of the pillow, so it really wouldn't matter. Um, if if you're gonna be using it as a coaster, um, you you know, you'll have to block it to make it lay flat and um, relax the stitches so that the, these knots can be relaxed, right? Look at that. It's not pulling it tight. So the trick is to, um, when you're working the first knot, Right, this one just loose, make it very loose, and then on the second one you pull tight. If you um, if you need to have more confidence in this, just do it one more time. You know, if if that helps. But that's it. Uh, this one would need to be sewed in because it's hanging by itself. But um, then you just snip off the edges. Snip off the things that you tied and oops that is it 
it's not the neatest um, solution but it works so and then since this was by itself I mean I could have also made a knot with you know the other yarns here but I figured I'd rather not um, and then I would just sew this down and um, keep going oops right that's done and I'll sew this since it was by itself as well If you're using a smoother yarn, you would have to be, you know, extra careful to make sure that your knots are tight. So I'm going to go go off camera and finish these and I'll be back. I'll see you soon. All right, so all done. Um, I ended up tying knots for the other sides. And um, I would say that the, um, the one where I sewed in all the ends is definitely smoother or flatter than this but then again this is the wrong side of the work and um let's take all these out blocking would um suit smooth everything out and relax those knots and relax the stitches but then again they're not going to come apart because the yarn is not smooth right so this is what we have this can be a nice coaster right and tuck that in. <laughs> but yeah that's it we have front and back or back and front or two coasters, you know, depends on what you would like. These ends are definitely, um, because we used two colors and we just kept carrying them around, it definitely worked better than these. But then again, it's the wrong side of the work. So um, it's up to you how you want to take care of the ends. But that's it. Real quick, I wanted to show you how to count your stitches, right? Because we're using the Tunisian full stitch, it's uh, it's a little different. So to count your stitches across, you're not you're counting each stitch across, not each stitch across, because this is a different row, right? So let me show you, right? So this is a different row, and this is another row. So when you're counting across, don't count, you're only going to count the stitches across, right? And there's always going to be a stitch in between because it's a Tunisian four stitch, right? So to count across would be one, two, three, four, five, which makes sense because we have one, two, three, four. And the next row after that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. So if for you to um count your... Um, for your <clears throat> when you're checking gauge so you know that would help it also help when you're trying to figure out how many rounds you've made or how many rounds you have left so that's counting stitches across counting rows okay so we're just gonna count rows this way right because stitches are this way rows are up and down right for rows we count both of those um, stitches because each one is a row. So the rows are going, let me use um, this color. Okay, so it's it's clearer here. So the rows are going um, one, two, three, four, five, right? If that makes sense. So we're going one, two, three, four, five. Because all those um, alternating stitches are on each row, right? So you're going on a row. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's hard to just put a ruler on, but you can just see one, two, three, four, five. That's that. If I were to turn here, you would see it was one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. It's harder to see on the screen. But 
um, that's how you count your stitches, your rows and stitches for your gauge swatch or for, you know, whatever it is you're making. That way you know that you're making the same um, number of rows and on each, because I think I have five here too. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, five, and then the bind off. So that's that. Now, when if when you're blocking, you would um block it with the corners like so and like so. See, you've got a nice square. Right. I like to mention that if you were um making a pillow and you were sewing these pieces together you would use whatever seaming method works for you so you could either do the um, mattress stitch or the single crochet join you would just make sure to use the same colors um, the, the mattress stitch is actually fine because um, the thread or the yarn gets hidden you know in between the stitches so it doesn't show up but if you're going to use a single crochet join you would have to use the same colors which would be different on the side so um it's up to you you can um use the back stitch and just you know do all of that together or yeah you could to seam it this way just make sure to line up the stitches corner to corner and um yeah so there's so many um ways there are so many options for you to um seam the pieces together however you like I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you um, enjoyed watching this tutorial. Please leave me a comment below. Let me know what um, what you choose to make with these um, pattern with the squares. If you choose to make a pillow or a blanket or you know coasters or whatever it is you um, choose to make, please um, leave a comment below. Let me know um, if this was helpful. Let me know um, what else you'd like to see from me. What else? Um, um, I mean, I deal mainly in Tunisian crochet, and I do have a soft spot for Tunisia in the in the round. But I also do regular Tunisian crochet. So, if there's anything else you'd like to see from me, just leave a comment below. Let me know. And um, any questions, anything, leave a comment below. And um, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.